What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Episode 6 of Andor is out and it was a banger. There's not really any question in my mind that this was the best episode of Andor. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it the most. The first three episodes, which we already covered, were, you know, kind of slow. Episode four was also kind of slow, a little bit faster. Episode five really was building up toward this heist that took place in episode six. So episode five was probably my favorite one to this point, and then episode six easily took the cake. This episode was sort of the realization of the buildup that's been taking place in the first five episodes leading up to this. So to this point in the series, I was sort of just kind of lukewarm on it. Nothing was really surprising me or impressing me that much, but all along, I mean, I said this when I reviewed the first three episodes, this is clearly building up to a bigger story. We have some time for this story to play out. Multiple seasons, longer seasons than any of the live action shows that we've had thus far. So we needed to allow this series to establish itself, and now I think it has done that. Episode 6 was a fun ride. Obviously, the rebel group who invades this Imperial base uh, did not come out unscathed. I didn't assume that most of them would make it out alive. Uh, at least three of them died, forgive me. Uh, I don't know all these guys names i've only seen the first three episodes twice and the latter three episodes one time a piece so i'm not very good with the names yet but cassian makes it out the leader of the group the woman makes it out the other girl cinta i believe is her name does make it out but she's still stranded on the planet it was never in the plans it doesn't seem for her to get on the ship with them so we'll see what happens with her i would think that she'll probably re be reunited with the leader um, the leader's name is Vel, I think. So I think they'll probably reunite, but we'll see. Uh, the lieutenant, he got shot, but I don't think he died. Or it's not clear if he died. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, if he did live, he was threatened that... He was told that he'd be hung, so if he survived... Either I could see Sinta maybe going back and helping him to escape somehow, or maybe he they'll both die, or maybe he will die. The Empire will make an example out of him for his betrayal and uh that will be that but time will tell obviously on that and on all of these characters the young kid obviously died he i mean really he should have lived he made it out of the mission alive and then just an unfortunate wrong place wrong time type of thing where he gets smashed in between the uh, all those those credits when cassian thrusts the ship forward so unfortunate for him obviously another one of the guys got shot back at the base and then Cassian actually kills the other guy who apparently was just in it for himself, even more so than Cassian was. Wanted to steal the 80 million credits they had just taken from the Empire and split it half and half with Cassian because he wasn't capable of flying the ship on his own. And that was it. That was the only stake he had in the fight. He didn't really care about the cause. So uh, that was definitely an unexpected turn for me. I did not see that coming. But what's going to be interesting for me going forward, and I'm sure this is a question on a lot of people's minds, is how is Cassian now going to become the rebel that we know him to be in Rogue One? Obviously, that's going to happen, but it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because, I mean, Cassian just left. He took his money, he's like, I'm out, and he leaves, and he doesn't leave on good terms either. So, I don't know. I assume the guy who recruited him initially will play a role in that, but we shall see. What's really been interesting to me about this show, there's two things, and one of them is with the Rebels, and one of them is with the Empire. Obviously, it's fun to see how the Rebellion, the very early days of the Rebellion, it's fun to see how the Rebel Alliance came to be, which is something that's going to continue to unfold from this point forward. But what's interesting about the Empire is I don't feel like in the past we've delved into the human side of the empire and really gotten into the inner workings and seen that these are just normal people who most of them believe they are fighting for a good and just cause and obviously we knew that they thought like that or at least some of them did but it's very interesting to really delve into the imperial ranks and see how all of those guys work and how like imperial soldiers or people you know working on this base that was on Eldani they are committed to the cause but it's like it's not that like they are bad people they're fighting for a bad cause that is morally wrong obviously but at the same time it's like they are humans and they're not all necessarily 
they're not all necessarily really bad people. They're just working for their living and joining up in a cause that they think is right. Because of the manipulation and the confusion and the uh, sort of cloud that Palpatine and his associates have casted over the galaxy, there is no clear right and wrong to a lot of these people. And it's just like, well, the Empire is the only option. So I'm joining the Empire. But then you have people who join the Empire and then they realize what they're really about. Like uh, Tala from Obi-Wan Kenobi. She joined the Empire and then she was like, no, this isn't for me. This, These are these are bad people. This is not a good cause. And same thing from what I've taken away with the general who was working at this Imperial base and obviously then helped this rebel group out. It's cool to see that. It's like some people, they join the Empire and they wake up and smell the roses and then the others just continue to be further manipulated and really buy into this cause. And whether that's them actually believing it or it's some form of like cognitive dissonance where they just, it's very uncomfortable for them to recognize that they're on the wrong side and take a stand against Against that so they just um, sort of convince themselves subconsciously that they're doing the right thing um, I think that's a very intriguing dynamic to delve into and that's probably my favorite aspect of this show both on the Imperial and the Rebel Alliance side because we also see that different people obviously this is only a very small group of rebels but we see how they all have different motives Cassian is in it for the money and he was actually recruited. This other guy who Cassian killed, also in it for the money. The kid who died, very much in it for the cause. Um, he, he hates the Empire and he wants to take a stand for what is right. He recognizes very clearly and eloquently describes the manipulation of the Empire and how they both convince themselves that they're doing the right thing and how they convince other people that they're on the right side and these people should comply with them and their rule. But again, the point is they all have different motives, but they're all here fighting the same enemy. And I think... You know, that's how rebellions start. Everybody may be impacted by the same greater evil in different ways, but they all come together to take a stand for what is right in the end. And the more people that join this cause and the louder those voices become, the more um, inspired and the more capable everyday people feel to also take up that cause. And also, if you kind of are somebody who just accepts that the Empire is in control, uh, like Cassian to a degree, like Jin Erso in Rogue One, um, when you see more of the inner workings of this fight against the Empire, it can inspire you as well. When you see that there are two sides to this fight and the Empire isn't the end-all be-all and they actually can be hurt, again, another inspiring thing for people around the galaxy, I think. So I think these uprisings and these rebellions against the Empire will continue to unfold and whether they're coordinated or not, and you'll start to really see how different pockets of people around the galaxy eventually join forces, you know, and the Rebel Alliance really begins to take off. Now, coming back to episode six specifically, and really just this series, these la these first six episodes, uh, one of the really cool things to me has been just the whole focus on TIE Fighters. Like, in this episode, we got to see them be dispatched, and I think that's cool. Uh, we got to see them in action. Um, but even before that, like they were flying over the fields, and they just have a very uh, menacing, intimidating uh, aura to them, and I think that's that's pretty cool too. Obviously, the sound of TIE fighters approaching and flying overhead is iconic, so I think that's been a cool part of this show. But yeah, I just wanted to check in with you guys because I really, really enjoyed episode six, and it's been a few weeks since we talked about Andor. I definitely, at this point now, would recommend watching Andor, although I'd like to see the rest of the series play out, obviously. But I mean, any Star Wars fan, like, yeah, you should probably watch Andor. But I think there's enough of the series established now where like if you just sit down and watch six episodes by the sixth episode, you'll be into it enough and you won't have to uh, sort of endure what some people have been complaining about. And that's just like the overall pace of the show. And people have been uh, unhappy with the pace and how slow the first few episodes felt and also some of some of the uh, political messages and stuff like that. Um, I'm totally cool with those. I'm on board. I think that's a logical thing to incorporate into Star Wars. It's something that's always been there. George Lucas was not shy about his political messages in his movies. Um, so 
yeah, I don't see anything wrong with it. So yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys have thought about Andor so far down below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to drop a like to support the channel, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and of course, may the force be with you always.